Hello, welcome to my channel, I'm All Things Wrestling and today I'm going to be giving my thoughts on WWE Raw, 3rd of July 2017. We kick off the show with Enzo Moy making his way to the ring. We are reminded that he'll be facing Cass at Great Balls of Fire on Sunday. Uh, he just mentions about what he's gone through for the past year, being knocked out on pay views, being up in hotel room, sensitivity training, all that kind of stuff. He thought Cass was there, but Cass wasn't there, he was just standing behind him, looking past him. Uh, he said, Enzo, uh, that he's better than him. Don't underestimate him. He's always here. He can dig himself out of a hole. Um, just general stuff like that. Ragging on Cass and uh, making himself look good. And he said, uh, don't be surprised when the next quarter, when the merchandise chest reads zero dimes, unless you start wearing a shirt that says Cass Hole. That was the best joke of the night. I have to give him that. And then uh, we asked about Colin, uh, his reactions, and he went, he thinks he can talk to talk, but on Sunday he won't be able to walk. Um, Enzo thinks he can run his mouth, and then Enzo attacks him from behind, and the officials have to separate both of them from each other. Uh, yeah, Enzo did a fantastic promo as always, which was fantastic. Cass got sweet to the point, and then got beat down kind of from cat uh, from Enzo and it's making me hyped for the match. Uh yeah, it's all good, good. I don't know why they need to break up, but they've been together for five years. What well, well, they have a lot more to bloody achieve. First of all, winning the championship. But they're just gonna be one of them teams that have never won it, I guess. Uh but yeah, I liked it. Good opening segment, strong Enzo and Cass are entertaining as hell, so all good good. Uh, then we move on to our first match. Bailey and Sasha Banks versus Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax. Jax drops Sasha on the top rope and then she connects with a running knee to Bailey against the ringside barrier. She is then taken to the back and we don't see her for the rest of the match, which I thought was weird. Uh, but Sasha knocks Nia off the apron uh, and locks in this bank statement and Alexa Bliss taps out. So even without a partner, Sasha makes a fool of Alexa and Nia Jax. Solid, solid book in there, WWE. Make your champion look weak. Good job. Good job on your go-home show. But it made me really intrigued for the match. So good job there. You've actually got me to think about the great balls. Fa pay-per-view. So good job there. Match was decent enough as well. Nothing spectacularly amazing. But a decent Raw match nonetheless. It's just chugging along nice for the pay-per-view. Then Kurt Angle is in his office. He's on the phone. Braun Strowman enters. Uh, he wants to know what happens when... Roman Reigns can't appear at Grey Balls of Fire. Uh, he, Kurt says he will compete. Uh, and then Braun says he wants to fight tonight. Uh, and then tells Kurt to figure something out. Great. Uh, he's trying to intimidate Kurt. And I don't think that's going to work. Which is really, really good. Kurt didn't back down. Braun's just trying to do the whole intimidation tactics that he did with Mick Foley. So, yeah. Good character development there. I give him that. Uh, then we have a look at the Brock Lesnar Samoa Joe match. Uh, that was alright. They had a bit of talking. Lesnar actually bloody talked on a program. Jesus Christ. Uh, Brock is just welcome to Super Black Silly. Joe says he'll lock in the cookie in the clutch and put Brock to sleep and become the new Universal Champion. That's basically the sum of it all. But it was an alright promo package, to be fair. Uh, there really is not much more I can say than that. It was decent for what it was. Then Cedric Alexander said he feels like a broken record. He said that it is over between him now and Alicia Fox. He tells Nam to come to the ring so he can send him to Alicia in a matching net break. Dark comes out and then he's joined by Alicia Fox. They have a match. Dark continues to work the arm. Cedric with a back elbow. Fox gets on the apron. Alexander avoids Don and hits the lumbar chair for the three count. Fair point. Hopefully they'll wrap up this Uh, little segment thing with them. I really do hope they do. It is getting a bit redundant now. So let's hope they can move on to bigger and better things. Uh, then we have Miz and the Miz Taraj with Maurice in the ring. I believe it should have been a Miz TV segment. I'm not too sure. I think it might have just been a regular segment. And they talked about uh, the embarrassment of last week and how uh, Lonzo Ball is going to be the biggest bus and end. WA history. 
Uh, he mentioned that Dean was a waste of potential. He was going to be the next Roddy Piper and the breakout star of the Shield. But he didn't. And then he makes... Uh, he only makes Dean relevant because he's Miz's joke. Miz says you can laugh at all of Dean's shows, but the biggest of them all will be Dean Ambrose. Dean makes his way to the right stage. Uh, Dean said he'll get a rematch and he'll have it right now. He's letting Rhino come out. He says doesn't want to be moved disrespectful, but he wants a title shot. He said he always says it was okay. He said it's going to be okay for his kids and daddy's got this, but he doesn't know if he's got it and he doesn't know if everything's going to be okay. He wants to earn this. Op- he's earned this opportunity for his kids. Dean tells Heath to wait his turn, get back a line. Miz says Dean gets a rematch when he tells him he gets a title match. Uh, Miz says that Heath Slater does not get a title match. Kurt Angle makes his way to the ring. Miz does not say when or where he competes. Kurt does. He just tells uh, Kurt to talk to Corey, pa- Corey Graves about his personal problems and get out of his business. He tells him to be careful what he says. He says... Miz says he'll do Kurt a favour and he'll defend his title on Sunday. Miz tells Kurt to tell him who's facing Heath Slater or Dean, Dean Ambrose. Kurt says he'll be facing both. Dean will get a rematch on Sunday, but Miz will be defending tonight against Heath Slater. Fair, fair point. Uh, the promo wasn't too bad. Uh, everyone did their job really well, actually. Miz made himself look like a cocky, oh, I can beat everyone, but no one gets shot, shot thing. Heath Slater looked uh, as good as he was doing in the pad down days. So fair point, I like Heath Slater. Uh, and Dean just looked good. They all look good. And then we have the decent match. It was actually a really good match. Miz with uh, the Miz Taraj versus Heath Slater with Rhino. And uh, Dean Ambrose was on commentary. Uh, Axel gets on the apron. Rhino pulls him off. Bo goes after Rhino. Rhino almost hits Maurice. Bo and Curtis attack Rhino and send him into the ring post. Miz score question finale for a three count. Uh, and then after the match, Miz slows Slater out of the ring. And Bo and Curtis attacks later. Dean comes over after Axel and Dallas. Miz is able to avoid Ambrose and Curtis and Bo attack Dean. Hit a belly to back suplex net break combination. And then a score cushion finale on Ambrose. Uh, solid, solid booking for that match. It was a really good match. It's making Miz look really strong. It's making him and the Miz Taraj look a decent group to be fair after this. I think they should because both Dallas and Curtis Axel deserve to be doing something. So good for them actually making them do something. Good job, WWE. And one thing. One goddamn thing you finally got fucking right. Jesus. Uh, then we see Titus O'Neil uh, talking to Apollo Cruz. He said that Braun's talked about not having any competition. So Titus says this is the personal opportunity for Cruz. Uh, he said Cruz cannot lose. Basically. Uh, I don't know, like promo. Uh, I like the pairing of these two. Um, it's given Apollo more opportunities. He even got to have a match against Braun Strowman. So, what could you say that about that a few months ago? So, good job, Cruz. Then Goldust in the ring. He says uh, he'll show everyone his greatest masterpiece, the Shattered Truth. Uh, we get to see it, um, and then our truth. He's in the ring. He throws some popcorn at Goldust, hits the spine because Truth punches Goldust, sends him shoulder first into the ring post. Uh, it looked good. The actual film looked good. Uh, this rivalry is actually pretty decent, to be fair. I'm really intrigued. I want to see who's going to win it. Uh, you've got me hooked. You've got it as a pretty good... If it wasn't for Vintage Goldust, it'd be crap. But come on, Vintage Goldust is fantastic. Let's keep it on. Uh, then Kurt checks on his phone. Seamus and Zara enter. Uh, he says that the match on Sunday will be a 30 minute Ironman match. And then Zoro asked for a match against Braun. Oh, asked for a match. Kurt suggested Braun Strowman. Cesaro said he wants Finn Balor. He wants revenge for after last week. And then Kurt tells them to be careful what they wish for. Yeah, that was good. A tag team 30 minute Ironman match. How many times has that happened? Not very often. If I can think of one opportunity or choice that happened, I don't know. But decent, anyway. Uh, then Curtis, Kurt Hawkins got in the ring, said he should be out of uh, Braun Strowman and give him a run for the money. I thought Los Angeles got it wrong, they doubted him. He did the whole 
do you think I want to win things? Seth just cuts him off. Uh, Seth agrees and punches him, hits the Rainmaker knee for a three count after about 25, not even 25 seconds, literally about 15 seconds. It was great. That was really, really fun. I did enjoy that. <laughs> Kurt Hawkins. Oh, you're a father now, man. So at least you're providing for your family. Well, not doing much work, so good job there, dude. Uh, and then he... Seth calls out Bray Wyatt. Uh, mentions that he's going to prove that Bray's not a god. There'll be one question left on Sunday. Are you a man or are you a coward? Fair point. Fair point. We don't know why this rivalry is happening, but let's go with it anyway. Then Michael Cole goes to the interview with Brock Lesnar and Samoa Joe via satellite. Uh... They just have a bit of back and forth. Um, he said he mentions about Paul Heyman running his mouth when Joe's not there. Um, but he's not very smug when he's there. He's been choking out the best for 20 years after Brock Lesnar mentioned all the names he beat. Uh, and then Joe takes off his mind, storms out the road. Paul jokes that Joe's looking for him. Uh, he keeps looking for him. Uh, Joe finds the room that Brock Lesnar is in, but Joe's how about by security? Yes, they actually filmed one of these segment things in a different boom. They never normally do, so surprised. Good job. Then match five, Neville versus Mustafa Ali. Ali sets up for a rolling netbreaker. Neville with a clothesline, applies his finger sand, and Ali taps out. Uh, it was alright. Didn't really serve much purpose, but it was a decent match nonetheless. Fair point. Uh, then Bray Wyatt appears in a desert in the early afternoon. Mentions about worshipping the sun, paying tribute, sworn enemies. But just the usual Bray Wyatt crap, basically. Um, so, yeah. He said on Sunday, you will look into the eyes of a god, but you will not go blind. You will see that you will burn. Uh, I like Bray Wyatt's promos, they're all decent. I'm not going to sum up what they're about because they're batshit insane, but I love it for that reason, to be fair. So, all good. Alexa Bliss walks in the bask. Uh, she was asked about what happened tonight. Is it going to foreshadow Sunday? She said it was a pl tactical plan of false sense of security. Uh, and then she was questioned about that, and then she said no one cares about what the interviewer says or thinks. Alexa got angry. I liked it. It was a decent interview because it made uh, Alexa look like a mega heel. So good job there. Uh, the Matt and Jeff Hardy joined the commentary booth for the sixth match. Finn Balor vs Cesaro. Hardy's leaves the announce table. Go after just Samson and Sheamus. Elias Samson did come down. Balor sends Sheamus over the top rope to the floor. Bad body job and then Balor with a plant shot to everyone. Balor punches Samson as Cesaro sends Balor into the ring. Samson is stopped by Matt and Jeff with the twist of fate on Samson. Sheamus with a bro kick to Matt. Jeff with a splash to Sheamus. Cesaro with a running up a cup to Jeff. Balor drop kicks Cesaro into the ringside barry and then he sends Cesaro back into the ring for a coup de gras. That was long. But yeah, a really, really good match. Finn Balor is fantastic. Cesaro is really, really, really good. So, yeah. Oh, good. It's set up for the feud of uh, all the feud going forward. The uh, tag team match on Sunday and the Finn Balor Elias Samson match on Sunday. So, all good there. Uh, then an ambulance backs up. Braun Strowman makes his way to the ring. He mentions about uh, Roman and about his competition and asks for some, one of them to come out. Titus comes out of stage, says. Uh, Braun is a big man with a big plan. Uh, tonight is a Titus Worldwide special presentation. He's proud, hungry, and the first time father, so he needs to show the monsters he can beat. Apollo Cruz versus Braun Strowman. Strowman licks Cruz's head and then powers down for the three count. It was actually a fairly decent showing from uh, Apollo Cruz, so good job there, mate. After the match, Titus pulls Cruz away. Uh, he gets decked for that. And then a power slam. Strowman takes Cruz to the ambulance, opens the back of it, sends him into the ambulance. 
and then signal for it to be away. But the ambulance does not leave. The siren sounds, but it doesn't move. Goes to the front of the ambulance. Roman Reigns emerges, punches Strowman. Strowman with a knee sends Roman into the ambulance. Ringside barrier. Roman sends Reigns onto the stage. Roman punches Strowman, and then Strowman is sent into the screens at the bottom of the Titan Tron. Roman with the spear, and both men go up the stage to the table. Uh, yeah, and then Strowman gets up after that very quickly. So it made him look strong. It made Roman look decent. It did a good job. I enjoyed the end of Raw. That was a really good ending. It, overall, it was a decent show. I enjoyed it. I can't wait for the Great Balls of Fire pay-per-view. So, yeah, it managed to sell me on the pay-per-view because it makes me really want to watch it even more because I really want to see everything that's going to happen on Sunday. So yeah, all good. Now as always, if you have enjoyed this video, please give this video a like. Please support me on Patreon, link in the description below. Subscribe to my content and I'll catch you later.